Static routing is a type of fixed routing in which path selection and routing is controlled by network admin, which means that it is not dynamically controlled. It is manually controlled by network admin, which means we have more control as a network admin. If we are doing the configuration on network devices, on routers, on Cisco routers, Huawei routers, we will have more control. While in case of dynamic routing, we have less control because routing is controlled or paths are selected by the routing protocol like OSPF, BGP or whatever. So some important characteristics of static routing they include the admin distance of static routes are always one although it can be changed which is called floating static routes but usually it is one which is fixed especially in Cisco. The path selection and routing is controlled manually by network admin. Static routes are always preferred over dynamic routes. Why? Because they have less admin distance which is one. So which means they will always be preferred because other routing protocols like OSPF in Cisco has an admin distance of 110 while RIP has an admin distance of 120, right? Sorry, my pen has an issue and uh, BGP has 220 for internal BGP and external BGP. Then the route, the static routes, they are less resource and bandwidth intensive, which means if we want to configure on a small network or a network which has small routing devices, small routers or lower end models, then static routing is best because we don't need much for example if we have only two or three routers in a network and we want to do the configuration of course it's not much practical to use bgp ospf or other routing protocols so in that case static routing is our best choice then static routes are not fault tolerant which means that when we have one router and another router and a third router if we have configuration between a B and we have configuration between the third router which is C. They are connected like this. So if we configure a static route between them which is from A to B, if this path or cable is broken by any chance but due to any reason, whether port is faulty, whether cable is broken, whatever or intermediate devices are broken, then in case of dynamic routing, it will automatically switch to here, to this second path. But in case of static routing, this is not going to happen, which means if this path is broken, a network admin or a person who is doing the configuration, he has to come to router number A, he has to modify the route from remove from here, move to this path and he has to go to B and he has to remove the route from here and configure the route to the other side. So which means they are not fault tolerant. If there is any problem, the routing will be down because the paths are fixed. Static routes are not practical for large networks. So if we have ISPs like Vodafone, like MTN, like British Telecom, Bharti Telecom, uh, we have for Telenor, we have for AT&T, they are not practical and they are seldom used in there, especially on the main network. They might be used in remote areas for small uh, separate networks but in the main network we never use them. So they are practical only for small networks. Then let's have a look on some of the advantages and disadvantages of uh, static routes. Right. So we can say that they are less resource intensive. This is an advantage of them. Also let me choose different color I guess and uh, also they have small routing table that's why they are less intensive they are more secure because they are not advertised on any port what is advertisement we have already discussed in our detail when we were discussing about dynamic routing administrator has more control of course we can choose with which path because we are doing manual configuration and there is no advanced knowledge or skills needed by the network admin then of course there are some disadvantages associated with it first of all they are not practical for large networks we have just seen that in here 
we discussed the admin needs to know the whole network the whole internet work because he will be doing manual configuration so he need to know everything from the source up to the destination it is not a scalable option it's not fault tolerant and there is no load balancing which is possible or which is available right so this is static routing then i have prepared a lab as well two labs actually one is static routing lab number one in this lab i have given you a task that you guys have to configure static routing between these two routers and you have to try to ping from computer number a to computer number b and if the ping is successful it means your configuration is good so this lab you can simulate in cisco packet tracer or gns3 cisco packet tracer would be better especially if you are at cisco ccna level huawei at cna level or juniper or you are doing any configuration so it gives you a task like all our labs all my labs it gives you a solution step by step what do you need to do on router number one which command on router number two and then finally verification then there is another lab in which i have given you three routers instead of two so that you can understand the role of intermediate router as well same you have been given a task you have to perform it you have to open the lab click on the router and finally you have to click on these computers and also try to ping from computer 1 to 2 2 to 1 if your pings are successful if verification is successful which means your lab is good so this is all about static routing i hope it will be useful for you guys then there is a special type of static route which is called floating static route or they are called as backup routes we just discussed that the admin distance of a static route is always one but like i said it can be changed so whenever we change it is not called as static route anymore if we change the default admin distance then it is called as floating floating static route floating or backup you can see from the name they are used as a backup so they are very low uh, they have a very low admin distance of one this means that your router will prefer a static route over other routers but if we want to use a static route as backup then we have to change it for example if there is an ospf route in the network and we want to configure the static route as backup because if we configure static and ospf both of course static will be preferred because it has an admin distance of one ospf is 110 so ospf will have less preference but if we want ospf to take preference and should be the first priority and static should be just for backup then we can change its default admin distance the same command ip route uh, route network and admin the network mask and then the admin distance in case of cisco the commands are a little bit different for other devices for like if it's a huawei router or something so this is called as floating static route floating static route or backup routes so this is all about static route